today we will be doing Anderson's bridge so the diagram is really simple make four dots this is the supply and connect this four dots so here we will be having an inductor a resistance which is in series with this inductance this is R1 L1 this is R1 and now let's connect this there is a resistance which is R2 this point now connected by a resistance R3 and the last part by R4 now the main thing here the deflection where we measure is connected here here is a capacitor and here is another resistance but this is a known non-inductive resistance this is a inductive resistance in series with the inductor ok so uh, now this is our E this is our potential E1 this is E3 that means E1 means if we uh, take a voltmeter and connect at this two point we get E1 similarly E3 between these two points E2 and between these two points E4 now the current distribution current goes from here distributes in the two path I1 and here I2 ok in the further detail I will explain in this diagram it is made much neatly so the current goes from here this divides into I1 and I2 I1 goes here now since it, mm, it is in the balanced condition no current flows from this path so the same I1 current flows through this R3 resistance so here I1 is equals to I3 ok now see this I2 current it goes from here and distributes into two paths IC and I4 so this is I2 equals to IC plus I4 now let's go into the calculations as you can see Mm, let me explain the diagram once again this is the inductance resistance in series this is the known resistance known resistance known resistance known resistance this is the capacitor so what we basically need to find is we need to find the precise measurement of the self inductance L1 so we need to find this L1 so how we will find that let's have a look at this so now at the balance condition as I said I1 is equals to I3 and I2 equals to IC plus I4 so I1 current is same as this I3 so I1 is equals to I3 and this I2 equals to IC plus I4 ok so let's uh, solve the potentials and get the precise inductance value that is L1 so first see between this E3 E3 as you can see resistance R3 and the current is I1 so this is I1 into R3 for the E4 see between these two points I4 is the current this is the resistance so I4 into R4 we can also write it as IC into XC this is the capacitor IC into XC XC is also written as 1 by J omega C so from this one we get IC into 1 by j omega c that is either we can uh, write this one or we can write this one I have taken this one so IC into j omega c from here we will get the value of IC so what we will do with this value we will have a look at this sorry this is R3 that is uh, IC this j omega c goes this side in this way we get this value now the other balanced equations which we will be getting from this balanced condition is see E1 will be equals to our E2 
that is E1, let's have a look, this is our E1. So E1, our current is I1 and the resistances, impedances are capital R1, small r1 plus this inductance l1 that is g omega l1 so we will write as i1 into r1 plus capital r1 plus g omega l1 which is equals to e1 equals to e2 as i said so as you can see e2 it is not only just this as i uh, did in the last case i took in the place of this this so here i am taking this place okay because this current only is flowing through this place now so this is IC into R so see I2 R2 plus IC into R this current is going from here and this going this place so between these two points I have calculated this so this is our one balanced condition similarly for this part we will calculate see simple as that IC into R plus 1 by J omega C from where we did um, get this now we get this from the here IC into R IC into XC X is 1 by J omega C so what we got IC into so we got so we got IC into R plus IC into XC this XC value can be replaced as this so what I did was took IC as common and wrote this IC common R plus 1 by J omega C which is equals to I4 into R4 what is the I4 value I4 is nothing but I2 minus IC as you can see I2 only gets distributed in these two parts now IC and I4 so I4 equals to I2 minus IC so in this way I got my two balanced equations right now we will solve it and get the value of inductance so I have done it for the convenience so you can see the values which I got from this uh, 1 and 2 ok so what we will do we will put the value of IC I calculated the IC here IC which I calculated I will put the value of IC in equation 1 and 2 so when I put the value in uh, 1 and 2 first let me put it in the equation 1 we will get something like this and when I put the value of IC in equation 2 we will get this and from these two equations 3 and 4 we will get an expression huge expression like this you can calculate and uh, get it done so now uh, when we equate the real and imaginary part of this we get R1 equals to R2 by R3 R2 into R3 by R4 minus R1 so by this we get L1 equals to this this is what we need to find out L1 so the whole process is this I hope you got some little bit idea about Anderson Bridge